Hey, it's Garrett Biz. Thanks for checking out this video. One thing I want to discuss is judgment that comes up all the time within the recovery community. There's so much judgment of what other people are doing, what other people are not doing, or how their approach or their path to recovery is just not the right way or not like it should be. And unfortunately, all this judgment that comes up every time we share an opinion with somebody or suggest that their pathway to recovery is not the best one or not the right one, or that they're doing something wrong, Unfortunately, that only fuels that shame and that discomfort in the person who's trying to find their way to recovery, whatever that looks like for them. The one thing I really believe as a professional working with people in recovery and also for any, for any of us in the recovery, uh, in, in that recovery phase of our life, it's not our job to tell other people what their recovery should look like. Uh, everybody's got a different pathway. So there's about 23 to 24 million people in America alone that are living in addiction recovery and an estimated 23 million people that are still in active addiction. Well, for all of those people, for the 47 million people, that's 47 million different individual life paths that got them to that place that they are. And that's 47 million different uh, experiences and nature and nurture and conditioning that got them to where they are. So the idea that any one single pathway is going to help them work out of their issues and, and find themselves uh, established in recovery, uh, it's just not realistic. Everybody needs to take a different journey to becoming that better version of themselves. And so long as they're trying to work on their issues and so long as they're trying to uh, effectively end some of that pain and that suffering in their life and the pain and the suffering that they create in the lives of other people, however they're doing that, I think it's something that we should support. And it might not look like the way that we believe they should approach it. It might not look like the system or the, the, the program that we're following to find our recovery, but as long as it's working for them, I think the best that we can do and what we should do is support them. And one area this comes up a lot is in the discussion of MAT or medically assisted treatment. A lot of people think that MAT is not really recovery. They say that, you know, it's just uh, addiction substitution. You're trading one substance for another. Uh, well, my argument would be if it's helping somebody get to a better place, if it's helping somebody stop accelerating that downward spiral of the behaviors and the activities and the, the risky things that they were doing in their life and active addiction. And, and either it's a step toward becoming a better version of themselves. It's a way for them to stop creating so much pain and so many more consequences in their life while they, while they then can go and address some of the issues, some of the pain, some of the trauma that, is, that has come up in their life. If it's a pathway for that, then I think it's incredibly, uh, it can be incredibly effective for many people. And it's something that I think we should only support in others, even if that's not a path that we took on our own to find our recovery or to find our, you know, our better way and become our better version of ourselves. For other people, they might have honestly faced so much trauma and have so much pain in their life that they will never actually get to a place where they don't need some external substance or some external behavior or activity to avoid or escape or numb that pain that's inside of them. And uh, that treatment that they're getting is allowing them to be a much better person themselves. It's allowing them to stop many of those behaviors, many of those activities that were hurting themselves and hurting other people. And if that's the best that they can get to, and that's what their idea of recovery looks like, then I don't see any reason that we shouldn't support that. It might not look like our journey. It might not look like our definition of recovery, but very few things in life uh, are, you know, everything in life is individual to somebody. Very few things in life are universally accepted, whether it's religion, whether it's politics, whether it's our beliefs or understanding about anything in life or anything in the world. So why shouldn't we support somebody else's journey or somebody else's path to their recovery if it's a way that is best suited for them? And who are we to define what's best suited for them? So it might not look like us. It might not look like our journey. It might not look like the program that we're following, but if it's something that can effectively help another person, it can help ease their pain, it can help uh, lessen the suffering that they're going through, then why shouldn't we support that? So here's, an, here's really what four things that anybody should do or anybody needs to do to be successful in recovery. And these are the things that we should all strive for, no matter what our pathway to recovery looks like. The first thing is, <coughs> first and foremost, don't hurt other people. I mean, that sounds very basic and very obvious, but there's so many things that we can do, even in our recovery, that are still hurting other people, still holding them down, still affecting their self-esteem, their self-advocacy, uh, still fueling shame or judgment in them, and that negatively affects their recovery in their lives. And this can be for people that are in recovery or for just other people that we know, but we should always strive to not hurt other people. Let's stop that poison, let's stop that pain that we're spreading. The second thing is just strive to be a better version of ourselves. 
no matter what that looks like, no matter what our pathway is, no matter how we're trying to do that, how we're, uh, the things that we're working on or how we're trying to become that better version, um, as long as we're striving to be better tomorrow than we were yesterday, then I think that's the best that some people can hope for. And, and all of us will find that way, find that pathway in some different form, following some different program, some different philosophy with different resources. But as long as that's our goal is to become a better version of ourselves tomorrow, then I think that's, a, that's an incredible win. The third thing is that we need to recognize and what we need to do is seek help. Understand that the limited knowledge that we have, the best that we know, the best thinking that we have at the time is what created us and what put us in those situations that we were. Maybe it was the best that we knew how to deal with the pain in our life. Maybe it was the best that we knew how to try and overcome some of the traumatic events that we've experienced in our past, but realize that we don't have all the resources. We don't have all the information. We don't have everything that we need to find ourselves in, established in recovery and recognize that we are gonna have to open up our minds. We are gonna have to seek help. Now, sometimes, the best that we can do at the moment is just try to maintain. The best that we can do is not continue to try and change and work on things, but with all that we have to invest, all the energy that we have to invest, the best that we can do at that moment is just simply maintain, simply not make things worse than they are and simply uh, maintain the level that we are. But at some point we'll get to where we can grow, where we can change, where we are open to making some changes in our life, where we can take on some more information and we need to be responsible enough to seek help at those times. Now, there's other people that we know that are in recovery that we always want to help them. We always want to share something that, that has helped us or inspired us and we, we hope it will help them. But we need to recognize that some people can't make changes all the time. Some people only have so much energy, only so much bandwidth, if you will, to make changes in their life. So if we try to impose our understanding or our knowledge or our resources on them and it's not a great time, they can end up just causing more pain than good. So we need to be respectful of that for other people, but as the individual, we need to recognize when we can, when we do have that capacity to make some changes, when we do have that capacity to grow, when we do have that capacity to try some different things and seek that help at that time. And continue to seek help to find the resources that are right for you. Really the fourth thing that we need to do is be ourselves and follow the path that is going to help us the most. If you try one program, if you try one approach to recovery and it doesn't fit, if there's just something that, that's not right for you, doesn't resonate well for you, we'll continue to learn, continue to seek other things. You know, there are some programs that aren't good fit for some people uh, for whatever reason, the ideological reasons, belief reasons, or just the, the pathway that they've gone in their life. There's some programs that aren't going to work for a lot of people. And if you find yourself and you've struggled with some approach to your recovery, that's not really working for you, then understand and know that there are many other pathways to recovery. There are many other uh, uh, ideologies and philosophies and approaches to recovery and overcoming some of that pain, overcoming some of that trauma and changing our behaviors and our beliefs to help us become that better version of ourselves. There's many different approaches to it. So if you found one that doesn't resonate with you and you just can't you just can't really buy into it and fully integrate yourself into that approach or that philosophy, then go seek that help. Go find another approach. Go find some other resources somewhere. Now, I'm not at all suggesting that we don't uh, have a lot of hard work to do. I'm not suggesting that a pathway to recovery is supposed to be easy. So if you are introduced to a program, you're introduced to a philosophy for recovery, and it doesn't seem like a good fit, you need to really look deep and question, is it just because I don't wanna make the changes that they're asking of me? Or is there something fundamental to it that's not a good fit for me? And maybe I need to find something else because that program, like we know what we need to do. We know when we need to make changes. We know that there's things that we'll have to do to make those changes in our life. And understanding that sometimes it won't be easy things. Many times it won't be easy things, but we need to make those changes um, that are right and understand some of the difficulty that we'll have to face. And I'm not suggesting that it's going to be easy, but we know those changes that we need to make. We know the behaviors that, that are hurting us. We know the things that we do, those activities that we do that are hurting us. And we, you know, in, deep inside, we know what's right and we know what's right for us. So continue to follow that path that's right for you. It was your life experiences. It was the traumatic events that happened in your past. It's your beliefs, it's your conditioning, it's your nature, it's your nurture that, got, that took you down that path that you went. 
It's only going to be your path that will help you get out of that. So make sure you find a system, find an approach, find the resources that are the best fit for you so you can become that better version of yourself. But those four things, don't hurt other people. Don't spread that judgment. Don't spread that shame. Don't tell somebody else that they're doing something wrong because it's not what you would do in that situation. Just you know, be respectful, be compassionate. We seek so much to have this compassion and understanding from the outside world, from people that haven't struggled with substance use disorder or, abuse, uh, or addiction in their life. We need to provide that within the community. We need to provide that to one another. We can't expect other people to provide something to us that we're not willing to provide and, and show to one another within the community. So be compassionate, be understanding, don't hurt other people should be the first thing that we do. And then strive to be a better version of yourself. Do, what it, do whatever that means. Uh, when you stop hurting other people, try to live more into your true potential and become that better version of yourself. Seek help when you need it and when you can and, and be willing and open to making those changes in your life when you have the capacity to do so. And only you will know when you have that capacity to make that change or if trying to change too many things at one time is actually going to make things more difficult for you and drive you back to a worse place. And then lastly, you do you. So you follow the programs or you follow the support, you follow those, the systems uh, and the tools that will help you and that mean the most to you so that you can become a better version of yourself. Thanks for checking out this video. Please leave your comments below. I'd love to continue this conversation, uh, share any thoughts or ideas that you have. Hope you're having a great one.